Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. I am so excited to bring you a species profile of a fish that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, something we've had in our fish room for a very long time. That is the Mira Rasbora. It is an absolutely tiny fish. It's right behind me here in this 8.3 gallon tank. And believe it or not, we've got 15 of them in that aquarium and you barely know they are there. That's how small they are, but they also have great color. Really appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoy the video. So what we're looking at here is an 8.3 gallon aquarium. Like I mentioned, this is actually one of the fish tanks that is in our live streams in the background. Now this isn't a very big aquarium, but you can see here there are 15 Mira Rasboras, otherwise known as the Phoenix Rasbora, in this tank. And it really doesn't look like much because they are so small. The other thing that you're gonna see in this aquarium are pumpkin shrimp. And you're gonna see that the pumpkin shrimp are actually larger than the fish. Now these are awesome little inhabitants. They are from Borneo. They stay small, as I mentioned. You're gonna be lucky if they max out at around three quarters of an inch. Females are gonna be a little bit rounder, show a little bit less color usually, but they both show great color. The other cool thing about the Mira Rasbora is they are very peaceful. They tend not to pick on one another or other fish or inhabitants. And so it's a really nice fish to add to a community aquarium. One of the best things about this little guy is one, they stay small. And there's not that many fish that can go in a five gallon aquarium. And this is certainly one of them. We've had the Miras, we've had chilies, we've had the dwarf rasbor, and we've had these fish in a small tank as a five gallon and even kept eight to 10 in that five gallon. And it really didn't look like that much. Just like here with the 8.3 gallon, it doesn't look like this tank is overcrowded. One thing I want to mention, I just did a video on some of my favorite rasboras on the face of the earth. Check out that video in the upper right hand corner. It will give you lots of really cool options. Now, the Mira rasbora can live anywhere from three to five years. We've, they tend to be a very hardy fish in our fish room as well. If you're thinking about, okay, what can I keep with these guys? They are absolutely tiny, so you have to keep that in mind. First of all, keep them in large groups. The larger the group you can have, the more confident they're going to be, the more you're going to see your Phoenix or Mira Rasbora. By the way, if you're looking for the Mira Rasbora, check out Flip Aquatics, flipaquatics.com. I will put their information in the description below. They are a channel sponsor. We partner with them because they sell awesome fish, shrimp, very healthy so check them out i know they've got the mirror rasbora so if you need these fish in your life that's the place to go so definitely keep them in groups even in a five gallon we're usually keeping them 10 to 12 in a five gallon here we've got 15 in an eight gallon if you're going to go 20 gallons or larger you could easily put 15 18 in that aquarium and it would not look overstocked at all if you're looking for other fish to keep with your mirror rasbora check out the description below we're going to have lots of options for you there but other rasboras are great options things like the rummy nose rasbora green kuba tie if you wanted to keep similar looking fish like this you got the chilies and the dwarf rasbora lamp eyes are really cool if you've got if you need a cleanup crew you've got your cory cats clown plecos Odo sinkless would work just great one of the nice things about having a fish so small is they tend to do just fine with shrimp again the adult shrimp are larger than the adult Mira Rasbora. So that's why we have the pumpkin shrimp in here. If you're looking for a centerpiece type of fish, something with some color, some interesting behavior, you could look at the peacock gudgeon. Those also stay pretty small. Celestial Pearl Daniel, otherwise known as the Galaxy Rasbora, would offer a nice contrast with that blue color. Same with the Emerald Dwarf Rasbora. So point is, you've got some options here, but stay on the small side, stay on the less aggressive side, and you can really have a tank that thrives. Now, when it comes to water parameters and how you keep the Mira slash Phoenix Rasbora in optimal conditions, they do accept a wide range of water parameters, even temperature. Anywhere from the low 70s, 72, 73, up to 80 to 82 is just fine. We keep our fish closer to 80 degrees. Wide range in pH, and I'm gonna differ here compared to the internet where they tell you anywhere from five to six and a half, and it has to be acidic. We don't have acidic water. In fact, our water has a high pH of around 8 to 8.2, and we've kept them in this water for years, and they're healthy, they're happy. We even see fry from time to time. So a pH of around 5 to 8 is probably, a, it's a wide range, but they do well in that wide range of pH. Same thing with water hardness, anywhere from 2 to 10 degrees. We are on the 10 degree side, so we're on the harder water side, and we still have a very healthy and vibrant community of fish. Now, 
it's important to make sure that your aquarium is cycled. There's no ammonia, there's no nitrite. We're trying to keep our nitrates to 20 parts per million or less. That's gonna allow your fish to really thrive. Feeding the Mira Rasbora is relatively simple. I haven't found them to be picky eaters. We feed our fish exclusively North Fin foods. In fact, I'll put a video in the upper right hand corner that shows you kind of how we feed our fish. We feed a lot of North Fin flake to these guys. So the community, this, even the cichlid flake, the kelp flake, crush it up because these are tiny fish. So we crush up your flake food. They also go crazy for live baby brine shrimp, which we actually feed to our fish twice a day. And these guys absolutely love it. And I think it contributes to their overall color. Now, again, I mentioned this before, but a five gallon tank is definitely sufficient. Obviously, the larger the tank you go, the easier it is to manage water parameters, the more types of fish you can keep in that aquarium. So just keep that in mind. I like this aquarium because it does a good job of showing the types of things you should include in your fish tank in terms of decoration and aquascaping. So first thing is the substrate. It doesn't matter if it's sand or gravel. These fish really don't interact with the substrate. So use other fish in your aquarium to determine what types of substrate you're going to keep. Either way, I will say with the substrate, darker is better. It tends to allow these fish a little bit more comfort. They're going to stay, they're going to stay a little bit darker. Same thing with the background here. You're going to see that our background is dark, and I think that brings out a nicer color. You'll see here we have live plants. Live plants are not required, but some type of real or fake plants is, are gonna give them a little bit of cover, make them feel a little bit more secure. Same thing with rocks and wood. The one thing that made this video so difficult to film, these fish do not like bright light. In some of the aquariums that we have downstairs in our fish room, we had dimmer lights and they were out and about and they were just right in the middle of the aquarium. I brought them up here to the studio and the light that's on here is fairly bright and every time I move the light they went to the side of the tank that was darker and so it was really hard to film these fish because you can't see fish when they're in the dark so that was a challenge but just keep that in mind when you're keeping these fish a darker aquarium is definitely going to bring them out a little bit more and they won't hide as much breeding the Mira slash Phoenix Rasbora isn't exactly well breeding it's easy to do raising the fry not so easy like many of the rasboras, they are egg scatterers. The eggs, you're usually going to fall to the substrate. Give them a couple days and they will hatch. The problem is your rasboras will often eat the eggs and will eat the fries. So it's best if you can to remove the adults after they spawn and let the fry grow up. Now feeding the fry is going to be really not a fun experience because they are absolutely positively tiny. So you're going to need some type of infusoria, some fry food, and then when they get large enough, you can switch to live baby brine, which could take a little bit of time. So it's not necessarily the easiest fish in the world to breed, but it also sometimes you'll see some of the fry survive just in the community setting, provided there's a lot of cover, a lot of plants, maybe some java moss, you might see a little bit of fry survival there. But this is a great fish. I highly recommend if you get a chance to keep the Mira Rasbora, especially if you're someone who likes the chili Rasbora or the dwarf, and you're looking for something very similar and you can't find one of those two, the Phoenix slash Mira Rasbora is a great fish to add because they do show the same, relatively the same color, same size, same personality. Would love to hear from you. Have you kept this fish? Do you enjoy it? Again, check out the description below if you want more information on species profiles, fish to keep with these fish. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.